One thing that I find interesting about life is that you can spend days, months, even years planning, but sometimes destiny has a different plan already set in stone for you. You can plan your schooling, career, and family as much as you want, and sure, there are times when that plan will be smooth sailing and everything will go off without a hitch, but of course, there are times that fate deals the cards differently than what you were preparing for and you're left making a tough decision or having to divert course from where your plans originally went. As humans, I feel like we spend so much time dwelling on the road ahead of us and trying to predict it that A, we forget to stop and smell the roses, and B, we get shaken up and caught off guard when that road takes an unexpected turn. Of course, it's healthy to consider your future and to make an attempt at planning accordingly. However, it's crucial to be understanding of when those plans don't play out and to be able to adapt as a person. On the other hand, some of us don't plan at all. Some of us take things day by day, and eventually that destiny is dropped right in our laps, and we might not even know it. Much like the former, it's crucial to adapt when destiny takes the turn that it's going to take. As it relates to my personal experience in life, I was the latter. It's a long story, and we've already gone long enough, so I'll spare you the in-depth details, but when I was in high school, I wasn't much of a planner. I mean, don't get me wrong, I got good grades, and I reached some pretty cool achievements over my four years of high school. However, I did have a lot of, let's say, underachiever tendencies, and my main focus was getting out of school to hang out with my friends. On top of that, I can be rather indecisive, and of course, that didn't help at all. In my junior year, I took a career test that said I would make a great architect. So my clueless brain, which had no plans for after high school, decided that that's what we were going to do. Naturally though, I didn't plan for it whatsoever. I almost went to college, but I decided that instead of that, I wanted to take a year off of school. I had already been through 12 straight years of school, plus kindergarten. I figured that I had earned a break finally. This here is about the point that destiny fell in my lap. At the time, I had no idea, but during that year off, the best thing that ever happened to me would occur. Fresh out of high school, I was in a relationship with the woman that I now call my wife. We had been dating for three years as high school sweethearts, and of course, I put plenty of planning into that. Ultimately, our plan was to get married and have kids when we were about 25, but life had different plans for us. I reached the end of my year off of school, and naturally, I didn't really want to go back, so I didn't make an effort to. By that point, I wasn't sure if I even wanted to be an architect. Shit, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to be an architect back when I took that stupid test. I did know, though, that I loved hanging out and playing video games, so that's what I did all the time. I had no interest in getting a job, going to school, or really doing anything other than enjoying the hedonism that life had to offer. Now don't get me wrong, living that way is just fine if that's your cup of tea and if you can do that in a healthy way. Personally, I don't know what a healthy way of doing that looks like because I couldn't make that happen. Though, sure, I was happy as hell. I was not healthy. I don't want to go into detail about it, but trust me, it just wasn't a healthy way for me to live. However, that would change about the time my then-girlfriend started waking up every day and puking her guts up. After a few days of that, we finally worked up the courage to go to the pharmacy and we grabbed a few pregnancy tests, all of which came back very positive. This right here was the moment that life hit me like a ton of bricks. This was the beautiful wake-up call that I needed. Seeing that positive pregnancy test was like a kick in the ass to me. It made me realize the things that I was spending all of my time doing, and it made me realize how much potential that I had in life. Not to become the most grand architect and invent the next big style of structure. No, that was behind me. I knew that I wasn't going back to college. I couldn't afford it, and honestly, even if I could, it just would have been a waste of money in my opinion. But I did realize how much potential I had as a father. From the second that my girlfriend started getting morning sickness, and I had even a hunch that she could be pregnant, I knew that I wanted to be the best dad and husband that I could possibly be. I was lucky enough to grow up with a very supportive and positive father figure in my life. He set the bar really high for what a dad is, and the thought that I could be that person for a child of my own breathed a new light into my life that I had never seen before. I vowed that I would do everything I could to provide for my kids and to give them an amazing life, and that's exactly what I did. I got a job, and I started taking better care of myself because I knew that I wanted to live a long, happy life with my kids. 
There's a lot of uncertainty in this life, but I know one thing's for sure. My kids being born is the single greatest thing that ever happened to me. When things get hard and life reaches its darkest point, I always remind myself of why I do everything that I do. There's always happiness and hope as long as I have my kiddos and my wife by my side. Looking back on my childhood, I mainly have my parents to thank for the influence that they've been throughout my life. However, along the way, there were a few influences that helped me develop the head that I have on my shoulders, which would come from rather unexpected avenues. Growing up as a kid, I remember seeing tons of cartoons that would feature father figures painted in an interesting light. Some portrayed as absolute trash dads who don't care about their kids, whereas others would be portrayed as the kind of parent who would go to the end of the earth for their child. What's interesting about that is there are lessons to be learned from both sides of that spectrum. That's why today, on our nostalgic walk down memory lane, and throughout the rest of this three video series, we're going to check out some of the genuine best dads from Nicktoons history. But before we do, I just have to take a sec to do a lightning round so that I can drag some trash dads through the mud and briefly touch on a few dads that didn't quite make the cut. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to make a long video about the trash dads because I will make a fourth video for this series and just drag some dads through the dirt. Right out the gate, Timmy Turner's dad, absolute piece of garbage father. His son is babysat by an abusive woman on the daily and he doesn't even pay enough attention to notice, bearing in mind that Vicky doesn't necessarily do the best job of hiding her abuse. Furthermore, his dad has forgotten his name and called him Noggy instead of Timmy, his dad has gotten him injured, and his dad put his own pride above Timmy's safety when he got upset about Timmy not riding a bicycle that he made that literally could have injured Timmy traumatically. Moving on from there, we have Drew Pickles, absolute trash dad. He's a complete pushover absolutely unwilling to stand up to his daughter and punish her. He lets her walk all over him and everyone else around them. She throws massive fits and he just gives in. Of course, I gotta bring up his brother, Stu Pickles. Stu isn't necessarily a trash dad. I haven't seen him do anything outwardly cruel to his children or do anything that resulted in them getting majorly harmed or becoming worst people. However, he can't watch those kids to save his life. They're always escaping and doing crazy stuff. Granted, they escape under Dee Dee's watch too, however, Dee Dee doesn't build massive reptar robots that the babies can pilot and almost destroy an entire city and hurt themselves within the process. Also, the first Rugrats movie in general. Need I say more? Now, I gotta give a shout out to SpongeBob. His dad seems really like a great and supportive dad, however, we don't really see enough of him throughout the series to gauge that, so I'm not too sure how to go with that one. But I will say when Spongebob's house was eaten by nematodes, both his mom and dad were incredibly happy about him coming back home, which leads me to think that he has a supportive dad. I also wanted to talk for like just a super quick second about Jack Fenton from Danny Phantom. Honestly, he sucks. He's so focused on hunting ghosts that he fails to be a good parent. He seems to barely know the first thing about his son, and on top of that, we've seen Jack give Danny some absolute garbage advice over the years. Moving on from there, though, there are a few goaded Nicktoons dads that I'm going to spend a few videos talking about. The first of which is going to be Ray Mundo from Rocket Power. Raymundo is a very strict father, but he's also very loving and very fun as well. He's a relatively laid-back surfer dude who, alongside his best friend Tito, runs a restaurant called The Shore Shack along the beach of Ocean Shores. Over the years, Raymundo would prove to be a very open-minded parent. He has a really, really good way of teaching a lesson that isn't necessarily detrimental to his kids, but is very creative in the way that he goes about teaching them that lesson. He also is a dad who has a habit of saving his kids in just the nick of time. A great example of Raimundo style parenting is seen in the season 1 episode Big Thursday. In the beginning of this episode, we see Otto, Reggie, Twister, and Squid as they stand on the shore in front of a very choppy ocean on a stormy day. Otto makes a comment about how gnarly it's getting. Only a brainless fool would try and ride this, sir. The rhino rides these waves, and if the rhino can, so can I. Excuse me, the rhino is only the greatest big wave surfer there is, and you're you. Hey, Twist, what do you say? Let's try it. I don't know, Otto Man. You 
Usually Twister has the bad ideas. We can do this! Just say no, Twist! It's just a little water. As the group gets completely drenched by a gnarly wave, Twister says he's absolutely not doing it. Then, next thing you know, we see Otto and Twister on the shore with their boards. They both go out and Otto is just hyped. He goes for a wave full force with no hesitation. Meanwhile, Twister is clearly not having a good time out there. I promise if I make this wave, I will talk back to my teachers, I will talk back to the policemen, I will talk back to the movie screen! Luckily, Twister and Otto get tossed ashore by the ocean as Reggie and Squid rush to check on them. They end up being a little shaken up, but okay. We cut right on over to the shore shack where everyone is gathered around the TV watching the weatherman warn of what he calls the storm of the century. I guess business is gonna be a little off. You know the old Hawaiian saying, when surfers don't ride, potatoes ain't fried. When surfers don't ride? I've ridden these waves. You were out there, little cuz? Yeah, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Do you like getting in trouble or do you just have a memory problem? Raymundo tries to explain to Otto that he's just a kid and that those out of control waves are unsafe. But Otto says that he can handle it. Otto, you're a good surfer and if you want to get better, you have to be smart enough to know your own limitations. But Dad, you don't understand! I understand. Raymundo tells the story of how Hurricane Monica hit 25 years ago and he went out, just like Otto did. He caught the gnarliest wave of his life, but he was inexperienced. Whoa! I wrote a check my tush couldn't count. You should have seen his tush bounce. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why none of you are gonna surf in this storm. Everyone promises Raymundo that they won't go out and surf, except for Otto, who just continues to argue. His argument being that a lot of guys surf those waves, including his idol, the Rhino. Raymundo tries to explain that Otto isn't the Rhino, and that the Rhino has years of experience, but it's all in one ear and out the other for Otto. Otto just keeps talking about how the Rhino is so hardcore because he's done it all, and just then, like clockwork, the Rhino himself walks up. This guy starts talking up how gnarly the surf is going to be tomorrow, and how he's going to paddle out there. Easy on the big story, Walter. Got it? Come on, Ray. Rhino, not Walter. Walter! <laughs> to me, big waves are like monsters. Monsters you need to go eye to eye with. If you don't face down the monsters, you might as well boogie board. Monsters scare me. How cool is this guy? We cut over to the beach on Big Thursday. The waves are humongous and violent. We see Otto and Twister run out and pass a sign that says beach closed with surfboards in hand. The Rhino says that he's glad they showed up so they can witness some real surfing. Rhino! Wait! Oh, the guys! <sighs> Please don't go out there, Otto! You're gonna get really warm! <sighs> Maybe your sister's right! Don't do it, Otto! You do what you want, Twist! I'm going out there with the Rhino! I'm gonna ride me one of them monsters! As Otto paddles out into the storm with the gracefulness of a freshly born baby giraffe, this happens. Hey, Rhino! What are you doing out here, kid? Are you nuts? I'm chasing the monster surf, Rhino! You're writing a check your tush can't cash, little man! Why does everyone always tell me that? We cut on over to Ray and Tito at the shore shack playing some old maid to kill the time. We see Twister and Squid sprint up to the counter as they're out of breath. What? What is it? Uh, 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 Otherwise, otherwise, serve with the rhino! Uh.
We cut on back to Rhino paddling headstrong into the storm while Otto awkwardly lags behind him. As they approach a gnarly massive wave, Otto panics and asks himself, what am I doing out here? The two approach the wave and as you'd expect, Otto almost instantly gets thrown from his board as the rhino conquers the wave like a madman. <laughs> Let's go, Tito! Let's go pronto! Tito and Raymundo dive right into the ocean and start searching for Otto, who is struggling to stay afloat as he gets bombarded by waves. While Ray is swimming and searching, he asks Tito if he sees Otto anywhere, but when Ray turns around, Tito is nowhere to be found. Nearby, Otto cries for Ray's help. We see Ray swim over and grab Otto as quickly as he can as the two get swept away by the current. The storm roars wildly as we see a huge wave throw Otto and Ray ashore under a massive pile of wood from the pier. Oh, you guys are okay! Oh, man! Oh, no! Where's Tito? Dad, I'm so sorry. I hope Tito's okay. Otto apologizes profusely to Tito and Ray takes Otto's surfboard away, saying that he's not going to be needing it for a while. Just then, this happens. I am Rhino! Hear me roar! You know, I think I'll have a little talk with the Rhino about being a role model for kids. Oh, Walter! Yeah, dude. <laughs> Rhino has some thinking to do. We discuss the responsibility of being a role model. Really reasonable, sweet guy once you get to know him. Whoa. Ouch. The storm starts to calm down as the group are walking along the beach and back to the shore shack. Otto admits that he messed up and that he should have never gone out there. Ray says that maybe someday he can ride the crazy big waves, but for now, Otto needs to know his limitations. More than anything, Ray says that he just hopes that Otto learned something today. Like, I should never bounce the checks my tush can't cash? Huh? <laughs> almost. Almost. I should never bounce my tush on a check. This episode is one that I look back on very fondly, and I totally classify this episode as one that really portrays Raymundo's parenting style. On the whole, we can recognize that Ray is a chill and laid-back kind of guy. I mean, he owns a burger joint along a sunny boardwalk and likes to spend his days surfing and chilling with his family. He seems to be rather go with the flow in his easygoing nature and honestly seems like a fun guy to grab a beer with. However, don't mistake his chill, easygoing nature for lack of parenting ability because Raymundo doesn't mess around when it comes to raising kids who will someday be respectful and upright members of society. He does a really good job of supporting his kids' dreams and embracing the fun things in life that they enjoy, but he makes sure that he holds them accountable for their actions and he makes sure that they apply themselves accordingly. One thing that I admire about Ray's parenting is the way that he refuses to allow his kids to replicate his same mistakes. We see him apply this ideal in the specific instance where Otto is talking about going out surfing in the storm like the rhino and Ray tells him no. We see Ray tell the story of when he was young and didn't know his own limitations. He tried to go out and surf in a freaking tropical storm and ended up being picked out of the wreckage by a young Tito. Ray already had to suffer the consequence of attempting something dumb like that when you know good and well that you're not prepared or experienced enough, so as a result of his good parenting, he wanted to save Otto from suffering that same consequence. 
That right there is admirable. Setting aside the fact that Otto went out and still did it, the fact that Ray didn't just tell Otto, no, don't go out and do that because it's dangerous, he instead told him, don't go out and do that because here's what happened when I did it and I don't want that same thing to happen to you. In a sense, adding that personal touch and relating it to an actual experience that Ray had himself helps convey the point a little better. That is something to be mindful of because of course that isn't the case with everything in life. Just because something happened one way to you doesn't mean that it'll happen the same way to your kids in all aspects of life. However, when it comes to something as intense as recreationally surfing in a tropical storm, it feels like that kind of applies in general. Another thing I definitely have to point out is the part where Squid and Twister run up to the shore shack and tell Ray and Tito that Otto went out surfing with the rhino. Just look at the look on Ray's face. Look at that pure dad anger. I'm not sure if he's angry at Otto or the Rhino, but I'm not envious of whoever he's angry at because there is not very many types of anger in this world that compare to dad anger as it relates to the safety of our children. Again, I don't know if the anger is directed at Otto for blatantly disregarding Ray's rules, directed at the Rhino for being such a crummy role model for kids, or heck, maybe it's directed at both. But regardless of who's on the receiving end, R.I.P. because this dad is pissed. Now I do have to take a sec to touch on the Rhino. This guy is what I would consider to be kind of a mixed influence, and I'll totally explain that. The Rhino is interesting because you see him living this surfer life out on the beach, and you see him on the poster in the shore shack, and lord knows how many other promotional items, and he is a great example for living your best life and following your dreams. I mean, come on, it's full blown storming outside, and there's damn near no one walking out on the pier or beach at ocean shores. However, the Rhino's out here in his tank top and shorts with his surfboard just living his best life. The Rhino gets to spend his days free and clear without any worry as he just gets to do what he loves for a living. Surfing. That's something that I can appreciate for sure and I feel like that shows the young people that look up to him that their dreams are achievable, thus making him a pretty good example. On the other hand though, the Rhino is going out there and telling these kids about how awesome it is doing dangerous stuff and he's going out there and surfing in tropical storms and giving these kids ideas. Kids like Otto look up to the sky and they end up mimicking his behavior and as a result they could get hurt. I do want to point out though that when the Rhino is paddling out in the storm and he realized that Otto was following him, he did tell Otto that he thought it was an awful idea. I feel like the Rhino deserves some recognition for this because obviously he didn't want Otto to follow him. He didn't want Otto to get hurt and the Rhino knows good and well that a little kid isn't going to be anywhere near as good a surfer as he is. However, the Rhino just doesn't take into consideration that kids might be tempted to mimic the things that they see him do on TV or in real life, which in turn makes him kind of a bad influence. However, that does lead me to another point that I wanted to bring up, and that's the fact that the Rhino isn't exactly the brightest bulb in the box. I'm not surprised that this dude of all people isn't taking into consideration that he could be contributing to these kids getting hurt because he doesn't seem like he has all too much going on upstairs if you know what I mean. Like some of the things he said throughout this episode and the way he portrays himself just kind of made me feel like he was maybe just a little bit dumb. Like for example when Ray beats him up on the beach at the end and this happens. First of all, he sounds like he's all the way there and knows what's going on, and he also sounds so confused about the fact that getting beaten up and having your head buried in sand hurts, and it's like, no dove, of course it hurt, you maroon. On that same note though, him being kinda dumb does play into the whole following your dreams narrative because kids can see the rhino and think, well, if this guy can do it, then I can for sure. Another thing I have to bring up is the way that Ray was calling the Rhino by his real name, Walter. This would imply that Ray knows the Rhino personally and that maybe he knows the Rhino from before he was famous. I'm not 100% sure, but I've got a hunch that maybe that's the case. 
I couldn't help but wonder why the Rhino would be going to the Shore Shack of all places while he's at a tourist town like Ocean Shores. But if he knew that the Shore Shack was Ray's restaurant, that would make things a little different, right? I also couldn't help but notice that during the whole sequence when the Rhino was talking to all the kids in the Shore Shack, Tito was over whispering to Ray about something. We never really circle back to this or learn why Tito was whispering to Ray but I can't help but wonder if maybe they were talking smack about him or something. Who knows, but I feel like that does kind of play into the idea that Ray and possibly Tito already know the Rhino previous to this encounter. I can say one thing for sure though, we do know that this is the kids' first time meeting the Rhino as they seemed very starstruck by him. You'd think that if Ray knew the Rhino personally, he probably would have said something to Otto by now considering he is Otto's hero, but who knows? Maybe he didn't because Ray doesn't like Rhino. Who am I to say? Other than that though, I have to bring up two totally random and completely unrelated things. First of all, during that tropical storm, specifically when we see Otto and Ray getting washed up, there is a ton of wood and debris that wash up with them, all of which looks like it was cut wood planks from the boardwalk. I will admit that maybe it's not all from the boardwalk, but where is all this wood coming from? There's a ton of it specifically concentrated on the beach, and to that mind, that implies that these perfectly cut yet broken pieces of wood are coming from the pier. However, if we look over at the pier, there doesn't really seem to be any damage to it. Like, I can definitely understand a few pieces of wood washing up ashore and not really noticing where they came from because there were so few and they aren't really too big so they wouldn't cause substantial holes in the pier, but these pieces of wood were not only large enough to cover portions of their bodies as they were washed up, but there were so many that they were completely covered and there was still a ton of wood around the surrounding areas too. You would think that if that much wood came off of the pier that we would see some holes in it or some sort of major damage, but nope, it just kind of looks like normal. Not the biggest deal, but just kind of a minor inconsistency that I noticed. Another thing that I definitely have to bring up is the scene where Ray is explaining how he tried surfing in a tropical storm and got destroyed. Towards the end, we see Tito walking along the shore and collecting shells when he pulls on Ray's ear and ends up helping him out of the wreckage. I just have to point out how much I love the vibe of this young Tito. The big old smile on his face and his hair down, I just love it. His fit is fire too. He's rocking the pink and yellow shirt with blue swim trunks and some bright green slides. For real though, I have so much love for Tito as a character in general. Though he is more of an uncle to the kids, he does a great job of providing a second fatherly figure to Otto, Reggie, Twister, and Squid. Tito is always there for them, and he's always happy to give some wise, sage-like advice. Heck, he even dove right into the tropical storm because Otto was in trouble. He put his own life on the line to help save Otto and ended up saving Otto's surfboard, but it's the thought that counts. When it came down to it and one of those kids needed saving, you bet your moneymaker that Tito was in those massive waves just as quickly as Ray was. Honestly, Ray is a really good balance of being a strict dad but also being fun and laid back at the same time. He's also really really good at creative punishment in my opinion. I specifically can't help but think about the Halloween episode of Rocket Power that I made a spooky season video about. I remember his punishment for what the kids did out on Mischief Night and it ended up being something really creative and that episode is definitely another one that comes to mind. I'll go ahead and link that video in the description box down below so you can check it out if you want to. I would have to say all things considered that Raymundo is a fantastic dad. He's goofy, fun-loving, and laid back in all the right times, but when you need him to be, he's a stand-up guy who will take things very seriously, and all in all, he's very focused on making sure that he's raising his kids right, and as a father, that's something that I recognize and I can admire myself. This one, honestly, was a really tough one for me to narrow down. When I think of Rocket Power and Raymundo specific examples, there are so many episodes that come to mind, but this one really just felt like the right one. It had an amazing moral to the story, and it really showcased what Raymundo and even Tito are willing to do for the kids. But what do you think? Do you think Raymundo is a great parent? Also, which dad do you think I'm going to talk about next? Let me know in the comments down below. I always love seeing your guys' feedback. You already know I gotta give a massive shout out to my patrons over on Patreon, especially you guys in the true 90s kids tier. 
You guys are the literal best, and I appreciate you more than words could ever say. You patrons have changed my life significantly, and I really, really thank you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give praise to the YouTube algorithm in hopes that it shares this video with everyone else, and as always, thank you oh so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I should never check my tush for cash.